Hello, this is Maria from Four Season Foraging coming to you today from my tiny little kitchen. And the reason we're here today is because I'm going to show you how to eat and cook with hackberries. So excited to share that. Hackberries are really yummy, one of my favorite fruits. But before I get into the video, just wanted to thank you for watching. If you like the video, please hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell for notifications. It's a great way to help me out for free. But if you happen to have some extra money each month, you can join me on Patreon. The link is right down there in the description box. And through that, you can pledge a small monthly dollar amount to help me keep making these free informative videos for you all. Thank you very much. So I have this little bowl of hackberries here. I just picked these a few days ago. These ripen on the tree in around here, usually late August, like in late summer, early fall, but they hang on the tree through the winter. And it is actually easiest to pick them after the leaves come off because that way you don't have to pick through the leaves to get the berries. Like you can see how small they are. They're about the size of a pea. It can be very time consuming to pick them. So having the leaves gone just makes that process easier. And I just started out with washing these. So I picked a lot of these like along boulevard trees that are along pretty busy roads, which is generally a foraging no-no, but usually contaminants aren't absorbed into the plant material itself, especially with fruits or nuts. Of course, this isn't always the case and you should be careful about avoiding contamination. Now there's a few different options when it comes to eating these. Option one and the simplest is just to eat them whole. So just crunch through the whole thing. You hear that? Very crunchy. So this isn't the best option for everybody, especially if you have sensitive teeth or delicate dental work. You probably don't want to crunch through the seed because the shell around it is quite hard. Option two is to grind them up before eating them. You can do this in a high speed blender. I am using a mortar and pestle today because I want to save most of these seeds for option three. So I'm just gonna put a small amount in here. Now, as I grind them up, you can kind of see the anatomy of the heckberry. It's technically not a berry, but a droop or a stone fruit. So more like a cherry or an apricot. So heckberries have this thin outer skin and then a thin layer of pulp under that. And then within most of the volume of the nut is made up by the seed. And there's an edible nut meat in there, which is why I want to eat them whole but surrounding that nut meat is a fairly hard shell. So as you continue to grind it, you'll notice that it turns into a paste. And when it gets to the finest that you want, you can just scoop it right out. Okay, so I'm just gonna scrape this up. And it'll turn into this little ball. So here's what it turns into. And you can make this into like an energy bar so you can flatten it out if you want or you can make it more like a cookie. Of course, when you add more hackberries, it will be bigger. So now we have this little bar that's much like a date bar. Hackberries actually have a very similar texture and taste to dates. They're also often compared to figs, I think. Those are all apt comparisons. I love dates, I love figs, and I love hackberries. So you can actually just eat this as is. This has a lot of nutrients in it. It has carbs from the fruit pulp and then fat and protein from the nut and also lots of vitamins and minerals. So very good for you. And hackberry remains have actually been found in Paleolithic caves. So this has been a human staple for a long, long, long time. But as another option, you can add other fruits 
like dried fruits or nuts to here. You could add fruits and nuts that you get from the store, like dried apricots or, you know, sunflower seeds or pecans or whatever you like. Or you can incorporate more wild foods into it. I actually have some nettle seeds still, which I think might go well in here. But I'm just gonna eat it like this. You can probably hear that it's still pretty gritty. Like you don't have to break your teeth cracking that nut open anymore. However, the fragments of that hard shell are still in here. So that's why you're hearing that gritty sound. So that's a bit annoying, but I really like hackberries, so I'm willing to deal with it. But if you just can't stand that, don't worry, because there's still option three. Option three is hackberry nut milk. So I'm gonna use my Vitamix for this. I'm going to go for the raw hackberry nut milk option. I've never been able to do it like that because I just recently got a Vitamix and can't do it without a high power blender. I've read various suggestions for the ratio that you want of hackberries to water. It's usually about one part hackberries to two parts water or one part hackberries to three parts water. So I'm gonna do one to two today and if it ends up being too thick, I can just add more water to it. So this is about one and a third cups of hackberries. So I'm gonna add two and two thirds cups of water in the blender. Okay, I'm just gonna blend this on the drink setting until either the setting is done or it looks completely pulverized. Okay, I think this looks pretty well ground. Yep, don't see any chunks in there. So now we strain it through a fine mesh bag. If you have a nut milk bag, you can use that. This is just a produce bag, which I think should work fine. Now we just let it drain for about 500 years. So if you don't have a high speed blender, don't worry. You can still make hackberry nut milk by mashing up the berries with a mortar and pestle. You can also maybe use a coffee grinder. I'm not sure, I've never done it that way, but I think it should be strong enough. You might just want to have a coffee grinder separate from what you actually use to grind your coffee. Like if you can find a spare one at a thrift store or get a cheap one somewhere to specifically grind up hackberries because I'm just worried it might damage the coffee grinder for the purposes of making coffee. But regardless, you measure out the berries and then measure out twice as much water, mash up the berries, put the berries and the water together in a pot, and then bring it up just barely to a boil and then turn it down. You don't want it at a rolling boil or anything. You just want it at a simmer. So there should be some steam coming off. A few small bubbles are okay but you don't want a bunch of big bubbles or want it boiling. It should be around 180 degrees. And you can simmer it for 20 to 30 minutes and then strain it out like I am doing now. And then there's another secret option to cook hackberries, which I am not doing because it's not really accessible to me and I didn't really have enough berries to start out with. So I've never actually tried this technique before, but you can find a recipe for it on the Forager Chef, Alan Burgo's website. And basically it's making a kind of hackberry candy where you dehydrate the hackberries first until they're bone dry and then grind them up. And then when you grind them, instead of making a date-like paste, it turns to powder. And then you just run it through a sieve to get out the gritty, shell chunks. So you're just left with the dried edible pulp and the nut meat. And then you just reconstitute that with some maple syrup. You can put some other dried fruits and nuts in there and it makes a kind of candy bar. But apparently in order to get the hackberries that dry, you need to put them in a dehydrator, which I don't have. What I've done in the past when I wanted a dehydrator was just to put it in my oven at the lowest temperature possible, like the warm setting and then crack the door open a little bit with like a metal spatula or something. 
So that's something you could try at home as well if you don't have a dehydrator. But unfortunately, my stupid tiny oven, the lowest temperature is 200, which is actually pretty high for dehydrating and would end up more like roasting the seeds than drying them. Here is the end product. <laughs> Super excited about this. I did end up squeezing the bag a little bit, but I do really advise caution with that because the gritty, sandy shell particles will come through the bag and then you'll have a gritty, sandy drink, which is defeats the whole purpose of making the drink. I suggest not squeezing at all or doing so very gently or just kind of sloshing around your bag, like moving the liquid to parts where there's not a bunch of sediment collected so it can flow through easier. I'm going to put a bit of cinnamon in here. I think that will be really good with this flavor profile. Okay, here's my little cup. Let's try it. Wow. <laughs> Holy moly, that is seriously so good. It's incredible. It's like way, way better than the cooked version that I've made. Like, I can't believe how much better it is. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> so tasty, I wish you could taste it right now. And if all you can do is the cooked version, that's fine, don't worry. The cooked version is also very, very tasty. It's just that this is like above and beyond good. This is nuts. Now, some people like to put sweetener in here, like maple syrup or honey or whatever. I feel like it's sweet enough just from the pulp of the fruit, but you can decide for yourself whether you wanna add sweetener or other spices or anything you like. I'm gonna try adding whiskey. I think I am onto something here. All right, got some tasty bourbon. Gonna put it in here. Let's see what the combo is like. Oh, smells really good. Cheers. Hell yeah. Okay, it's the next day and I'm still wearing the same outfit, don't judge me. And we're going to talk a little bit about cooking with hackberries. So in addition to the simple ways I showed you yesterday, we can also do further cooking with the milk. And we'll say that generally you can use it as a substitute for dairy milk or other nut milks. However, do keep in mind that this is quite sweet, so not something I would use for most savory dishes. Something really simple you can do with this is just add it to tea or make a chai tea out of it. So I put some of it into my black tea this morning and I thought it was really good. I don't think it's a flavor that would work well with all teas. Like I think the more spicy, gingery, like chai or like a turmeric or licorice or ginger tea or that kind of stuff would work well with it. You could also try it instead of milk in desserts. I know that baking can be really finicky and ingredients don't always substitute well. So again, I would exercise caution with that. And you know, don't make like a ton of it when you've never tried it before and expect it to be good the first time. There might be some like adjustments you have to make. I actually don't have a ton of experience cooking with hackberry milk because it's like so precious to me. <laughs> That's why I usually just drink it or use it for tea. Or last night I discovered cocktails. That was great. But what I'm gonna try right now is making some French toast and using hackberry milk instead of milk or cream. And I think that flavor profile will work really well. And I also think in this case, it doesn't matter if you're using actual milk or nut milk because basically you're just using it to thin out the egg anyway. Okay, so I have a stack of four pieces of bread and I'm not using a recipe. I 
Don't really ever use recipes. I'm gonna crack some eggs into here. And then I like a little bit of vanilla extract in there. I would normally add cinnamon, but this is already cinnamon bread and I put cinnamon in the hackberry milk. So I'm not gonna add even more cinnamon. And then I'm just gonna pour a little bit of hackberry milk in here to thin this out. Also look how orange these egg yolks are. I love it. And I'm gonna put a little bit of salt in here. You might think I'm weird for putting salt in French toast, but you gotta salt your food people. Even if it's sweet food, salt brings out the flavor. Okay, I probably could have done fewer eggs, but I will not let this go to waste. <laughs> I know how precious eggs are, I'll save it. And I'll make some more later. And I'm gonna kinda let these soak in the egg mixture for a little bit because they are actually quite stale. So I think they need it. And then while you're letting this soak, you can start heating up your pan. I have a cast iron skillet here that's heated up and seasoned. And finally, I have some ghee, which is clarified butter. So I'm gonna be cooking this in the ghee. I don't recommend using regular butter because it'll probably burn, but you can use a neutral flavored oil instead. Yummy, these look so good. Just gonna put a bit of syrup on these. And I'll stack them up. That'd be a little sweet, it's okay. Some pepper, salt and parsley. Yummy. All right, let's try it. <laughs> it's very tasty, but honestly, I'm not sure I'd be able to tell the difference between this and French toast that was made with regular milk or nut milk. Like it mostly tastes like cinnamon, which makes sense since it's cinnamon bread and I put cinnamon in the hackberry milk. Also getting a lot of buttery flavor from the ghee, but I'm not sure I actually taste the hackberry, but maybe if I did a side by side, that would help. Oh, I should have done a side by side. <laughs> I do have some almond milk in the fridge, so I could have done that. Well, regardless, it's very good, but personally, I prefer getting more of the hackberry flavor, so just drinking the milk straight or using it in tea is really good in my book. So that's the end of my video about eating hackberries. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned some cool things and something that you're excited and inspired by that you wanna go try out yourself. If you did, please hit that like button subscribe to my channel and ring the bell for notifications. Those are all great ways to help me out for free. But if you have some extra dollars a month, I would super appreciate your support. You can join me on Patreon. The link is right down below in the description box. And on there you can pledge a small monthly dollar amount so that I can keep making these free informative videos for you and everyone else. So if you're able to join there, that would be super amazing but also it's okay if you can't. Either way, happy foraging. Mm -hmm.